So, Sub here uh, for Performance Sin, and I'm having a quick chat with Karina from Awen. How are you doing, Karina? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. <laughs> good. Uh, thanks for taking time to speak to us. Um, no problem. Obviously, uh, you know, we're at affiliate, not uh, Awen's think tank event in County Hall, Westminster. Um, so, yeah, how are, you, how are you finding today's conference? I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I, honestly, the keynote uh, speech on the Brexit and the relationship with consumers, I think that was definitely super valuable and interesting. Yeah, great. My favorite. Great stuff. Uh, speaking of sessions, uh, also you just hosted a uh, influencer marketing session with uh, Kate Irvine, um, yes. sort of touching on the authenticity of the channel. Uh, yeah. what, was, what were the sort of some of the key takeaways? I would say the main takeaway is for uh, you know advertisers not to see authenticity just in the context of fake followers and bots because I think that's what people talk a lot about. But you know we have technology now, and you, with the you know new software, you can see fake followers at the click of a button. So I don't think it's really worth discussing. Uh, authenticity should be looked at in terms of like the content that these influencers create and the relationship that they have with their audience, and that is you know if the brand placement there is actually authentic. That's that was the main key takeaway. Cool, great stuff. And there's no denying, you know, authenticity is uh, it's a big factor in uh, influence marketing and sort of what was discussed today as well. Um, just how vital is it for advertisers to work with the right influencers uh, whilst dem also demonstrating authentic campaigns? Yeah, I mean, honestly, if they if advertisers they don't want to like finish a campaign, look at a report that has a bunch of impressions, a bunch of likes, and then look at that and be like, okay, now what? And then, yeah, they should prioritize authenticity because it's very easy to spend a lot of money and have it go to waste. Um, so having really doing the work, you know, when I explain to clients sometimes really what goes into it, they, you know, they look in their faces like, oh, that's a lot of work. I thought it was going to be easier. I was like, yeah, it's easy to spend money and not have any results. It is hard to see results. But when you do see, it can be really, really good. Great stuff. And sort of um, speaking about influence marketing as, as a whole, it's becoming increasingly accepted uh, within the affiliate space. Uh, so sort of with larger portions of marketing, but, but much marketing budgets being designated to it. Why do you think that is? <laughs> Um, I think more marketing budgets are coming into the affiliate space because we have transparency of the entire funnel and we can really measure the impact of that influencer uh, throughout the customer journey, depending on the type of attribution the client has set up. So, you know, it's fine. I think many clients used to have their, these relationships either managed in-house uh, and then in that sense, they discover that as they wanted to work with more and more influencers that actually are operationally, it's quite a lot. So. Um, you know, they bring that to us or sometimes they used to have it managed by PR, but, you know, measuring influencer marketing just on earned media value, which is what PR measures, isn't really like appropriate either. So, um, yeah, affiliates has a lot more transparency for them. Honestly, almost too much transparency. So, you know, <laughs> they can really see what they're putting their money into. Cool. Great stuff. Just a couple more questions. So despite headlines of influence marketing, the channel is rapidly overtaking traditional marketing uh, Practices with more acceptance, do you think influence marketing has potential to achieve even greater results with fewer limitations? Um, I mean, I think it depends how you interpret limitations, but um, I think on some areas, it, it would actually be better if we had more limitations or more regulations, like for example, the supplement industry, like that needs more regulation uh, on social media, just in general, not just with influencers, obviously, because there's no regulation and limitation in this area. Like those, a lot of those products, like these fit teas, you know, a lot of them are just basically laxatives and it can be quite consequential. Whereas for fashion, okay, you buy an outfit, you don't look good. That doesn't really have a lot of consequence. So that I don't feel that that needs a little, a lot of limitation. But I think there is a bit of a danger for advertisers wanting to replace other forms of media and like, for example, the volumes that they used to see in other forms of media with influencer marketing. Because the more you want volume real fast, you lose control of the message and all those things. So I think there is a lot of potential. Uh, I think there is a lot of potential for that. But um, I think advertisers need to be careful, but I, I, for sure it's exciting. Cool, great stuff. And so last question, uh, just talk, you know, we're in the second half of 2019, you know, look, look at the 2020 <laughs> plans. Uh, where do you kind of see influence, influence marketing heading? Um, I mean, the industry as a whole, I mean, I think it's tough to say. Um, I think we are seeing yeah, increased investment. The industry is becoming way more professional for sure. We have more professionals that 
have been working in influencer marketing for a few years now. And so there's more people that know what they're doing now uh, compared to a few years ago. So I think we're going to see more sophisticated campaigns, more interesting campaigns. Um, you know, A1 side for the end of the year, obviously all our campaigns are based on retail and they're tied to key retail trading periods. So, you know, we're going into the second semester, uh, you know, peak Black Friday, that kind of stuff. So uh, in our on our side, we see we need influencers to really support that, you know, support those objectives. Cool. Great stuff. Thanks, Karina, uh, for taking the time to talk to Performance Sin. And yeah, it's great insight into influencer marketing and uh, of course, great session as well. So, yeah, um, enjoy the rest of the thing. Thanks this afternoon and Thank we'll catch you. up with you soon. And thanks, Performance Sin. <laughs>